Have you always wanted to start your own business? Well, if you're 50 plus, you think that might, you might be too old to start? No, not a chance. You are never too old. Welcome to What's Next, everybody, where we are living your passion at any age. My guests tonight, Jill Pavlik, co-head honcho, I like that title, and master brewer Deb Locke of Urban Growler Brewing Company. And they followed their passion of opening up a brewery and that dream came true in July 2014. Congratulations on that and thank you for joining me tonight. Thank, thank you, you for having us. This is awesome. I've been talking this up. We had to postpone this the first time because, and I was very disappointed because we had flooding here. And then with this storm coming out, I sent you out a note yesterday and right. said, if you needed to, you had an out. But I think this is a perfect night for this. So, we yeah. wouldn't have missed it. Yeah, so thank you for joining me. I also want to let our audience know that we are taking questions from you online. So if you want to participate, start sending your questions in right now. Our social media expert, Carla Berlin, sitting just off camera here, of Around Town Media is going to help sort us through some of those questions. So uh, uh, Jill and Deb are ready to take any of the things that you might want to ask them. But back to your passion. Was there ever an aha moment when you were sitting there in your corporate lifetime and you were either having a bad day or you're on vacation or explain how all of a sudden you go from doing what you were doing to we're going to follow this dream. So whose idea was it? How did it happen? Well, I can tell you that uh, when I worked in the corporate world, two of the folks that I worked with, not at the same time, but passed away at a very young age. And it was kind of the impetus that started the, holy cats, this could happen at any time. And it was very sad, they had young children, but it made me start thinking, what about all these things we want to do someday? When is someday going to be? And so we started talking about it. What do we really want to do? We didn't know what it was, but we, we started would, thinking about it. We would sit and drink Deb's homebrew and be like, hmm, what should we do? Uh, How open about a coffee shop? <laughs> uh, Something for the environment. Yes. We like dogs. Something with dogs, yep. Mm -hmm. But no, and then we, as we were drinking the homebrew, we kind of figured out maybe it should be a brewery. Sounded like a great idea. Well, so you have a chemical engineering background, well, I'm degree? A, a biomedical engineer. Biomedical, okay. Biomedical engineer, yep. So I've actually been in training for this my whole life, but <laughs> didn't know it. Um, also a project manager in the medical device industry. Mm -hmm. So both of those things um, were perfect for becoming a brewer. A mm -hmm. little more risky being a brewer than uh, working in corporate America, and that was one of the biggest hurdles for us. Mm -hmm. So after you were having your aha moment and you said, okay, so this is what we're going to do, you left the state promptly, both of you, right? Well, kind of. <laughs> we started getting jobs in the industry. I worked okay. for a restaurant and to learn the restaurant industry and um, also at a liquor store to learn why they buy the craft beer they carry. And uh, Deb then started... Yep. So I uh, left my job in corporate America to become an assistant brewer in northern Wisconsin. I also worked at the homebrew store on the weekends. And then, uh, you are exactly right, we left the state so I could go to brewing school in California. So where is that? University of California, Davis. Okay. In Davis, California, the master brewers program there. Okay, so I associate that with winemaking. So they mm -hmm. obviously do brew making too. Yep, mm -hmm. both things at University of Davis. Uh, UC Davis, mm -hmm. uh, big beer master program, brewmaster program. So we went out there kind of with two weeks notice. We packed up the car, off we went. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's quite an intense program. So now you've completed the program, you're moving yep. forward, yep. you're going to come back. Then what happened? Finish the business plan. Yep. That and was... I also did uh, my apprenticeship oh, yes. at Summit Brewing here in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we've had, we, I'm working restaurants, liquor stores, Deb's working at uh, a small brewery and a large brewery. And we decided we needed, and finished the Master Brewers program, we decided we need to finish the, a business plan. So we found uh, that there was a comp national competition on, through Palo Alto Software. 
and the winner would be ten thousand dollars cash and we and were like we're gonna win it we're winning this <laughs> baby yeah so 160 page business plan submitted and uh we wow, found that's out that's impressive <laughs> yes yes uh and we uh found out that we were first runner up oh. yeah. we lost oh. to women saving starving children in africa and oh. we were okay with that yeah, yeah. um but we did uh, did win first runner up, and we got ten thousand dollars in free services like legal help. Mm. Uh, so that was for that. That for us was like okay, this should be a no brainer for banks. We've got four plus years experience, master brewers, award winning business plan, and uh, we thought. This will be a no-brainer. And a lot of experience, because as you can see, we're also not spring chicken. So through right. our well, careers, no, we're, yeah, we've we also... Just, we have experience. We have right. experience. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom. Yep. So off you go. First bank. <laughs> First bank, I don't think they read the business plan. Second bank, they may have read the business plan, um, but the questions were kind of off the wall that we just thought, well... Bank one, two, three, that's probably normal to just put you through the ringer and make you sort of finalize or really think through uh, what you're going to be doing. Well, bank four, five, six, then we start questioning what we're wearing to these banks. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, we were denied by 12 banks. And the comments we heard were, um, how will girls your age carry, carry those big heavy bags of grain? Um, how will you um, gals keep those late night hours? And we were horrified. Did like, you look and go, what century are we in? It, we, <laughs> and it wasn't just men making these comments. This is also from women bankers. And um, we, were, we, were, we started to get scared. Like, wow, this might not happen. Even though we're both all in, we've invested our you know, retirement, a ton of time, um, we've made, we found a space we wanted to have the brewery in. So it was pretty devastating, but wow. we, we decided we needed to get creative. So, yeah. so, um, well, we, uh, started to raise money through a different sort of way through a crowdfunding type way. So we, although we didn't use Kickstarter because you can't use alcohol as gifts. So we did our GoFundMe. Uh, no, that wasn't, wasn't there okay. yet. It was okay. our home, home, homegrown version. Okay. So we had our space, mm -hmm. which is an empty warehouse, not with any heat or anything in it. And we had architectural drawings. We had my homebrew. We gave away pork carnitas. And we told our story over and over and over again to anyone that would listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sold t-shirts to a brewery that didn't exist yet yep. and got the community excited about what it could be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we raised half a million dollars in a in a year which was the seed money we needed mm. for the bank and then finally the 13th bank pioneer bank out of mankato a farmer's bank nice funded us and so we we uh stayed loyal to them mm -hmm. through our expansions and you and you have a um beer can yes that really commemorates that experience and we we do yes. have a, a picture of it so it's got the 13 stars on it and I and it's actually one of the the ones that I like when I sampled it at your, at your place but it's it, how fabulous is that 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 beer can is also part of your story yeah, yeah. every so can has the Kentucky Uncommon yeah the Kentucky Uncommon it's a blue can for Kentucky like bluegrass there's a horse head on the can that has to do with like horse racing um, and also the horseshoe is because we felt very lucky that we were funded and there's uh, 13 rivets and stars in that horseshoe. So mm -hmm. every can has a story, uh, but that one is extra special to us. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a viewer online. Uh, Fiona, did you, ever, did you ever feel that you wanted to give up? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, we, we joke that we were never both in the fetal position at the same time. Right. Excellent. Yep. So that's, we're fortunate that we're both in this together. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, we were very frustrated. And in fact, one of the rejections we got from the bank who we had been going through the process with for quite some time. And met every hurdle. Met every hurdle. They just kept putting up more and more hurdles. And we got 
through them, we were ready to go sign the deal and buy equipment. We were at the Craft Brewers Conference and we got the... In Philadelphia. And got the note. We're just, just not, can't, we're we're just just not, not comfortable. comfortable. That was their answer. Wow. And um, so... It, it was yeah, pretty devastating. Was, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very devastating. But we uh, have a lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of founding members that um, wanted this to happen. So thankfully we had a good, we have a good support system around us to keep us moving. Mm -hmm. So another question is, um, uh, and of course this is, you know, how do you make the cowbell, cowbell so addicting? <laughs> 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 More cherry cowbell, please. It's, oh, it's the love yeah. in the beer that makes yeah. it addicting. So the yeah. cowbell cream ale is it's a lighter color beer, but it still has a lot of flavor. So it's for people who don't normally drink craft beer, that's something unusual for them. It kind of lures them in, but it's very easy to drink, but still has a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, in our tap room, we try to do a variety of styles. So that would be in the lighter style. We have um, other beers that are um, heavier in alcohol or higher in hops for more bitterness, so a variety of styles. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we also do, um, so we were six years in planning before we opened, and in that time, we went visited a lot of tap rooms around the country, and one of the things we found is that um, women weren't really marketed or well represented, so we wanted to take a shot at um, meeting. Opening a space that, um, with women in mind, but not at the exclusion of men. Got it. Okay. And that would be a variety of different styles in a very drinkable range. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is really interesting. So uh, um, how do you, uh, uh, how did you choose Midway? And then what are the benefits you have seen from choosing that location? Well, when we were looking for a space um, in St. Paul, the brewery had to be an industrial neighborhood, but we wanted it in an industrial neighborhood that was in near residence, so kind of like an oasis. And so we- Because those were our favorite tap rooms we visited when we traveled all over the country in our planning days. Yep. Um, but Midway, we were looking in a different location, uh, but it we couldn't afford it. And yep. um, Midway at the time is exactly what we could afford. It's we, a beautiful space. It is. It's a we, perfect location. The Green Line finished a month before we opened. Um, and we live two and a half miles away. Walkable. It's yeah. walkable. It is. It's a great location. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, you know, and you this won't is, stumble upon it. No, that's true. But that's once true. you find it, it's, mm -hmm. it's easy. You can find your way back. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is unsolicited. We've been there. We love the food. And, and, we, and I personally loved the, the sampling that you guys have there. So, Thank I you. mean, they, they, and, and when you look at that board, I don't know whoever puts the graphics up. Great job because mm -hmm. it's prominent when you walk in the door. You see it towards the back. It's all these colors and it's kind of everything that's on your menu and a few other things besides. So nice. that's that's a lot of fun too. Um, so another question is, uh, do you have a space available for private events? We do. Is that our team uh, sending in questions? Yeah, uh, <laughs> we do. We have two spaces. Okay. Uh, one we call the Hayloft. That's about up to 50 people. And then we have our barrel room which is where we are actually um, aging beer in barrels, uh, but it looks sort of a, like a speakeasy space, and that'll be like 150, 175 people. Mm. Uh, so we've had weddings, retirement parties, um, networking events. Plays. Plays. Wayward Theater was there with doing a play a couple times. Um, so it's a, it's a really beautiful um, space. So you have a partnership. So, what, so yep. now I'm getting a, a question about that. What's yep. the toughest thing about working together or the toughest challenge you needed to compromise on together? Oh I'm not sure there's much compromise. Mm -hmm. um, we have totally different styles in almost everything, which makes us a great team, but it's sometimes difficult to work together. And so, well, there's a line at the brewery. So early <laughs> days, there, there's the brewery side, 
which is truly like a, a food safe floor. And then there's the con you know, the the um, front of the house. Front of the house. And so we had to decide kind of early on, like anything brewery, that's all your decision. Deb. Anything front of the yeah, Deb. Anything front of the house, I ultimately get to make the decision. We will consult with each other, but it does come down to what side of the business is it? Now we have a team of 50 people. Oh, nice. So we have mm -hmm. a lot of help with giving us lots of suggestions. And um, sometimes we're like, wow, well, when did that happen? And uh, so <laughs> it's nice. It's really yeah. great. We have such a great team. And uh, we're a couple of squares, but our brewery has turned into a really cool space thanks to the, the team we've uh, assembled. And somebody, and so another person asked, how did you train your employees to be so great to your customers? Obviously, somebody who is. Has been there. Well, yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So well, we hire for personality, and so our mission is to bring people together through beer. So we really are looking for people that connect with other people, and we can train the other stuff. We hope, mm -hmm. and but it's really getting the right people in the first place. And it's so our, and it's also we want to be known for great beer, fantastic food, outstanding service. And you can't, people aren't going to care about your food and beer if your service is terrible. And they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna come back if the food is bad and the service is great. You know, it all ties together. Mm -hmm. So um, it is something we do talk about in great detail. And yeah, and even in the, we have a tap room, but we also distribute our cans and kegs. So we self-distribute our beer. So we have our own sales reps out in the field too. And that same applies to those folks. They are great brand ambassadors and great people. So, and so and we'll get people coming in saying, I talked with your salesperson who's doing a tasting at such and such liquor store and they told us to come in. So it's really nice because as long as we're providing a great uh, experience for the people in the tap room, they're gonna continue to look for a beer in the liquor stores and then mm. it's also vice versa. You know, mm -hmm. they'll find us in the tap or in the liquor store first, have a great experience with the salespeople, and then come in. Well, we so. just showed a picture online of, of the, the cans. Oh. So, how did you? Because when you start, when, I mean, you can explain what the, the, the state of Minnesota tells you you can do, but mm -hmm. uh, how did you decide then you're going to go from your tap room into you know, also providing your, your product in cans? I mean, that's obviously that's the extension. Was that part of your business plan? Yes. Yes, our plan was to start in the tap room first, then go to distributing kegs and then eventually cans. So the tap room, you know, it has a finite amount of space. And so that's to the extent we could grow. And then to go further into the market, we really needed to distribute cans. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Um, about two years ago, we started distributing cans. I have so in a the schedule. Twin Cities, yeah, also oh, in the Twin Cities, you can find your product in yes. a lot of different places. Yes, okay. all over the Twin Cities. Yep. We're in most liquor stores, mm -hmm. uh, and it's our goal to be in every liquor store in the state of Minnesota. And it's also our goal to be one of the top 10 breweries in the state, not necessarily by volume, but by reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody else wanted to know, do you have a team of advisors or other women in the business that help you in this? Yes. Yes, we have we have a team of advisors from business owners and then a great team of professional network. Um, and some of our advisors are other business owners, women and men. Mm -hmm. So we're equal opportunity. But when you when you started, advisors. The, yeah, well, when you started, it, it, you were the first women owned brewery in Minnesota. Yeah, in are Minnesota. you still um, in Minnesota? I, I don't know. No, actually, the, Deb makes this comment sometimes that if you like visiting other tap rooms, uh, the worst thing you can do, or if you like going to tap rooms and drinking beer, the worst thing you can do is open a brewery because you don't get outside of mm. your four walls. So <laughs> That's I'm, right. I'm hoping there, I mean, we were surprised that we were the first. Again, it's 2014. How can this be? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I know there's a lot of husband-wife teams. Um, I know they're... There's got to be, but I don't know of any. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that speaks a lot to, to what you guys are doing. Uh, someone wants to know is, does, uh, how does Jill always have perfect hair? So, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Today it's the wind and the sleet. Oh, oh too funny. Um, 
So Scott and I... Mom, get off the yeah. <laughs> Scott and I had a sampling a couple of weeks ago, right? So my faves are the Cowbell, the Kentucky Uncommon, and the Ginger... Double. Double, yep. right? And uh, those are some of your best sellers, right? So uh, how... When you're sampling out there, mm -hmm. and you said something before we started, you, you're kind of dependent upon the items that are coming in locally. Yeah, so the beer is seasonal. Um, so we try to make the style appropriate for the season. So right now, as we're coming into spring, we will want more lighter beers. Some of the high alcohol, heavy barrel aged stuff, it's not something you want to drink when it's warm out and that's better for winter. Mm -hmm. But we also have what we call our Plow to Pint series where we feature some local ingredients. So the next beer we'll have- P-L-O-W. P-L-O-W, like a plow tractor, mm -hmm. right? So um, the next, we have a honey IPA coming out right now. So right now it's in April. So in Minnesota, there's a dearth of fresh ingredients in the winter. So we got to either plan ahead, we got to put it in the freezer, which we have a bunch of cherries in the freezer, um, or things that don't need to be refrigerated. Honey, maple syrup, wild rice, those are all things that we make in the off season. Hmm. When Otherwise we use fresh ingredients. Rhubarb wit will be coming up in a couple weeks, and then blueberry wheat, some raspberries, some lemongrass, some pumpkin saison. So whatever we can come up with, we will uh, if you find it we'll at the farmers it. market it will probably be making an appearance in a beer okay. and we always have our flagships as well but right. typically yep. we'll have 13 beers on tap yeah around 13 beers that's a lot that's a lot yep. so here's another question uh, yep. this is for Jill uh, who is her favorite boss my favorite boss yeah of course the, this did come oh. in from Don Heikola, Heikola. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well it's funny you should say that Don Heikola. <laughs> uh, it, that's one of the great things about having this brewery is all these people that come into your life that we never would have crossed paths uh, had like we not opened. It reunion is Reunion Central. It is. And uh, this gentleman, Don, was a great boss. And I was like 18 when he, um, when he was my manager. So um, I do, he comes in with his wife and now his daughters that are probably college age. And I do get to talk about how um, he was, mm -hmm. he was a great, great guy. Mm -hmm. So the one thing about beer is it's very social and it brings people together mm -hmm. regardless of age. So we have people in our tap room for, well, families, little kids up to 90 year olds. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Another question here from online is, is also something that I uh, had also been thinking about ahead of time. So if you, um, if you had a chance to do this again, what would you do differently? And then the, the other half of that is when you opened in 2014, what would you have told your 2012 self? Would have told 2012 self sleep now. Yes. <laughs> Cause that's done. Yes. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure we would have done anything differently. Um, well, one of the things because of having to get creative, because the banks, because 12 banks denied, did it have to be 12 banks? No, it would have been nice maybe six, but, or two, or two. But, uh, because that happened, it really, we are both competitive type folks. So I really feel like. Um, some people, it might have been too much, but I think if you have that in you, it just makes you want to succeed all that much more. Mm -hmm. And to see these other, to see these banks that denied us come in and say, oh, I see you're expanding, I'd love to help, and to be able to say, you know what, we're good, but thank you. Uh, pay your bill and come back again, but mm -hmm. thank you, we're good. Yep. So it did add fuel to our fire. Um, so that success is pretty sweet, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, the bank still owns everything. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. But um, we, I do believe we're going to make it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think um, I heard the gentleman that owns Town, Town Hall Brewery speak once, and he had, was 20 years into the business, and he had said, if I could go back and tell myself something, it would be, you're going to make it. And I think I do, I've told him more than once, I think about that when I go to bed at night and I cannot sleep and I'm worried about this, that, or the other thing. 
I just tell myself we are going to make it. And so far, so good. Yeah. Knock on wood. Well, knock on, yes, exactly. Um, and so now, uh, this is what we call, in case you didn't know, so uh, do we have something for our St. Cloud viewers that you can share? <laughs> well, uh, we hope to be in St. Cloud within the next couple months in liquor, in liquor stores. stores. Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, that's very exciting. Um, and if you want to start talking to liquor stores now, uh, that if you'd like to see our beer, let them know because we self-distribute and that's how we get, um, that would speed up the process quite a bit. All right. I want to thank both of you for joining me tonight. This has been delightful. You've got quite the stories to tell. I hope lots of entrepreneurs were watching us tonight because I think you answered a, a lot of the questions about if you've got the dream, passion, and you dig down deep, you, you can follow us. So thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Again, Jill Pavlik and Deb Locke of the thank Urban you. Growler Brewing Company. And for tap room hours and more, just head to urbangrowlerbrewing.com.